My last two videos are those tutorials and it shows how to make the frame page of this shaker and to make these letters. Hi everybody, welcome to another video on Planetzoid. I am extremely excited to finally present this video because I have done other tutorials in the past, but I think this will be my first full-fledged craft tutorial. So I'm really excited. I'm trying new things, trying video formats to see what work. So hopefully this works. And I did upload a couple of recent tutorials. So make sure you check out those videos because it will be linked to this video as well. It all goes together. Plus, I just want to know how am I doing? Are my tutorials clear enough for you? Are you guys understanding? Like, just let me know. I want communication so that I could be able to better my channel for you guys as well as for myself. So I'm excited. Like, oh, I'm so excited. Not Planazoid over here doing tutorials. Okay, so this video is going to be a tutorial on how to make this planner shaker cover page. That's what I'm calling it for now. I don't know, that's, that's what I've been calling it. <laughs> so this is for my personal ring bound planner. However, it can go for any size planner you like. So the shaker I'm gonna be making is gonna be another one of these for the month of October for my personal ring planner. And then here is how it looks in the planner when I do finish everything and put it in the holes and everything. So this is how it should look. It is so cute. I actually love it. It's something different. It's something fun. And it really dresses up your planner. And I want to be able to do one for every month. So I did miss September, but I said I wasn't going to miss October. So that's what this video is going to be for the month of October, creating one of these cute shaker pages. So with that being said, first, I want to go over all the materials you are going to need because I want this video to be formatted in a way where it's like we can do it together. So all the materials that are going to be needed is going to be a paper trimmer. And you're going to be using three other punches with this. So you're going to need a whole punch of your choice. I will be using uh, the punch made for ring bound planners. But let's say you're using a happy planner, then you could just use a disc punch. So a whole punch of your choice the mini alphabet punch board, the frame punch board, a cutting board of your choice. There are so many to choose from, but so far all the items I have shown are from the brand We Are Memory Keepers or American Crafts. So I'll be using majority of stuff from their brand because it all goes together. <laughs> and then you're going to need Paper of your choice. I prefer to use cardstock paper because it is a lot thicker. And then you're gonna also need a piece of acetate to go with that. And then of course you're gonna need the letters that you will be using. So I will be using these letters and I did laminate them, but I'll get more to that you know, later in the video. You're going to need some foam tape, a pair of scissors, Another kind of adhesive, so like a double-sided tape or some glue or something. Um, my adhesive that I'm gonna be using is by Tumbo. It's the Dots adhesive, so it's pretty much just a, like a roll-on. That's what I'll be using. Of course, glitter, because what is a shaker without glitter? So this is the glitter I'll be using. I just created a random mixture. And then you're gonna need like paperweight or books. So I'm just going to be using a couple of textbooks as my paperweight to put my shaker together. And then this is optional, but I'll go ahead and add it in the materials anyway. But you will need a laminator. So the laminated paper I use is the Scotch Thermal Laminating Pouches. That's pretty much the only kind of paper I use. And then towards the end, I'll show what kind of laminated machine I use. Those are pretty much the materials that you're going to need. For the video, I'll make sure to list them in the description box as well if I went too fast in the video or something, or you don't wanna go back, that's fair. <laughs> so these are pretty much the materials you'll need and let's go ahead and get started. 
Oh, I almost forgot to mention, you will need a self-healing cutting mat. I highly recommend that you have a cutting mat for your projects if you don't already, so that you can protect the surface of your desk. And I don't know, they just look so cute. The one I got is from Joann's. What's caught? I got it from Joann's. And it's a small size, it's just a 12 by 12 but they do make bigger sizes. I also have the Cricut self-healing cutting mats too, which are really big. So make sure you have a cutting mat whenever you do craft projects to protect the surfaces of your desk. So the first step you're going to do, I have already done it off camera, but I still wanna go through each step, you know, one by one, even if it's already done. So the first step you're going to do is you're going to measure and trim your pages. So I have already done so. So for anyone who has a personal ring bound planner like I do, the back sheet of the paper where you will be punching the holes is going to be six and three quarter by four and one eight inches. So that is the measurement of my back sheet. And the trimmer that I use is by We Are Memory Keepers. It is the all in works punch board. So it's actually like several different functions you can do on this board except for cutting. So you don't have to have this, of course, this was like $70, but a regular cutting board will do or guillotine or whatever you can use to measure and cut, even scissors if you have to just use scissors. You do not have to have a fancy cutting board. But just to show you, I would just line it up on the board and then I would just slice the blade and cut. So that's pretty much what I did for the first step. I highly recommend going ahead and cutting all pages first, just so you don't have to keep going back and forth. So the back sheet for my personal ring bound planner is six and three quarters by four and one eight. And then the acetate and the frame page will be the same measurement around. So the frame page is three and five eight by six and three quarters um, inches. And honestly, I don't know which order to say the measurement. I feel like I should say the bigger number first, <laughs> but let me know. Hopefully that's not confusing. So it's gonna look something like this. So the frame should be smaller than the back page because the back page, you gotta punch holes. So that's why it's bigger. And then obviously if you have a disbound planner, you would just measure whatever measurement your planner page is like not the divider, but just a planner page, you will just follow those measurements and cut accordingly. So I have my two pieces of cardstock paper, which is the back sheet, the frame, and then I have an acetate sheet, which is by the brand Cricut, but you can use any acetate sheet. Um, and I cut it the same size as the frame. So that's step one is to go ahead and get all your pages cut out, measurements done. That's step one. Step two would be creating the frame. So for step two, I have already done it off camera. However, there is a video on my channel that I posted not too long ago. It's probably going to be my last one or two videos that I posted showing how to create this page. And I did it on another video just so this video wouldn't be too long. So if you don't have a frame punch board or not sure how to use it, I highly recommend that you reference that video and then you can come back and continue on this video or to watch those two videos first. I highly recommend you just watch those two videos first so that you already have some of the steps done. But step two will be to use the frame punch and create the frame. And that's what I've already done with this punch right here. And then step three would be to use the ABC punch board and create your letters. So right here, I have already done so. This is also a separate video on how to do the alphabets that I've done right here. So if you need to reference that, you can. Um, it does also come with an instruction booklet that you can follow as well. But once again, I just wanted to do it as a separate video so that this video would not be too long and all over the place. So this is step three to create your letters. 
Now I did laminate it, which is optional, and I do need to cut these out. And then, as mentioned, step one, two, and three is pretty much creating this. So after you create it, your back page, your frame page, the acetate page, and the letters, steps one through three are already finished. And I think it's like eight steps in total, so we're already halfway through. So now that your pages are created, we can go ahead and get ready to use the glitter and the adhesives now. So let's focus on the frame page. So step four would be to put your acetate page and attach it to your frame page. So you can do that by gluing or do what I do and I use the dot adhesive. That's what I like to do. But you can also use glue as well. So before I do attach it, I need to take off the cover of this acetate because I don't know if you notice, it's a little frosty looking, but it's not supposed to be that. It's supposed to be extremely clear. So a lot of acetate sheets, not all, do come with some kind of covering on it. So that's what I'm doing now. Just picking my nail to take it off and see how it became clear. You can already see the difference. So yeah, and I believe it's on both sides. So here's the acetate. As you see, it's really clear now. So that's how it should look. It should be super clear. So now what I like to do is just use my adhesive to attach it together. Like I said, you can use glue, you can use other kinds, it's any kind you can use. And of course, because the frame is thinner and this is a thicker, it's like thicker than the frame, if that makes sense. The glue is gonna get on your cutting mat, but what I love about this is that it's easy to wipe off. So that's why I like to use this. It's a lot less messier than like liquid glue. Once you have adhered all sides of your frame, then you will take your acetate sheet and line it up with all the corners. Now, at times I might just take a larger acetate sheet, stick it on there and cut it around, but I didn't feel like doing that this time. So since it's measured exactly the same, I need to make sure I line it up. So you would line it up, you would press it on, and then take off whatever adhesive may be hanging out. So what I like to do is just simply use my fingers around all four corners and press down just to make sure it's on there. Because I have encountered times where it would lift up, which I really hate. <laughs> and then I don't know if you could see that, but right here is some adhesive. I just like to use my finger and get it off and that's it. That's why I like using the adhesive dots and the adhesive strips, because it's easy to clean up. And if need be, I do the same on my project too. I just kind of rub on the sides gently because you don't want a paper cut, make sure there's no adhesive hanging off. Now that step four is finished, which was attaching the acetate to the page here. Step five is to add foam tape on all edges of the frame page. So now on the back of the frame page, we're gonna take our foam tape and we're gonna add it all around the back edges. I use two kinds of foam tape. I use the foam mounting tape from Dollar Tree. This is from Dollar Tree, it does pretty good, but you could definitely tell that is not the same as the other brands <laughs> that I'll explain later. And then the other adhesive I use is from Recollections, which I got from Michaels. It's just double-sided foam tape. And I got a little bit left here, so I'm gonna go ahead and use that first. I actually like to use this one when I do the back of the frame page because it is literally the exact measurement. It's, it's perfect. 
So I'm gonna go ahead and use that now. And it's double-sided. So one side is sticky and the other side, you've gotta take the, you know, the covering off or whatever. So what I love about this is look how it just lines up. It just, it just lines up. I like it. Now, obviously be careful that it doesn't show in the frame, but <laughs> it still lines up perfectly. And then if I have a little bit that's left off like I do here, because honestly, it's really hard to cut at certain angles. I'm normally leaned all the way over it or I'll pick it up and put it close to my face, but I'm doing a video. So if there's any left out, you could just take the scissors and slightly lift it and just cut it off. But I'm gonna do that at the very end because the one thing you don't wanna deal with is gaps. So make sure while you're adding this foam tape that there's no gaps. And also make sure it is not showing on the acetate. And the best part about this tape is that it can be easily moved around. Like you can lift it up and move it around with no problem. But you better hurry because once it adheres, it is supposedly permanent. So, but the good part is it's on acetate. So it'll lift up a lot easier than if it was like on paper. And sometimes to try to prevent those gaps, I like to push the edge against the other corner since it is pretty bendable and then I would cut. But I wanna make sure there's no gaps. So if I have to push and create something, like a little indent to let me know where to cut, then I will. So I got it all on four sides, but I do need to clean it up a little bit. Like it's hanging off the side here. I need to cut this here. So let me do that real quick. Okay, so now you should be looking like this. So there's the front of your frame page with whatever color you used, and then the back should look like this, and there's the tape. So I haven't taken the tape off yet. Well, the back peeling off of the tape yet. Step five was to add the foam tape to the edges of the frame page, which we just finished. Step six would be to go ahead and add the glitter to the back page, and then put the frame page on top. So when you add your glitter, try to add it towards the center and then slowly spread it out and then put the frame page on top. I like doing it this way because then you can see. So you'll just put the glitter here and then you'll just put this on top. So let's go ahead and do that. And also, now that you've moved your frame around and stuff, it might get little prints and stuff on it. So you could just wipe it off with a microfiber cloth or one of those like cloths you use to clean your glasses, just like a soft cloth, you can easily wipe that off. So the glitter that I use is the different combinations of glitters from all the different craft stores and online stores that I purchase from. And I am thinking of adding this in my shop. I don't know yet. I thought about adding these into my shop. Let me know if you wanna see it in my shop. Okay, so. We're on step six and we're adding the glitter. This might be too much glitter actually, now that I look at it. I'm gonna try to add it all if I can. Okay, so you don't need this much glitter. I could have put way less, but I do like a lot of glitter. So make it as full as you wanna make it, but don't make it too full to the point where your glitter pieces are stuck. And a lot of this glitter is Recollections as well, the brand. And I just use purple, orange, black, and like a little bit of light blue to create this little mixture. Cause Halloween is supposed to be the theme. So I'm trying to do the colors. But yeah, I guess I'll stop there. I didn't know I did this much glitter. <laughs> so I'll stop there because that's a lot. And then I'm gonna take the adhesive off the back and I'm gonna turn it around and put it right on top, so.
and be careful because once you take the back off, it does become really sticky. So I like to try to just touch the edges, not touch in the middle or too much because it might lift up with your fingers. So you have to be careful with this part. And then you'll just line it up and put it on there. So let me see, I might have to turn it funny so I can see. <laughs> But I tell you, you have to be so careful putting it on because it is easy to not line it up. And then when you have to take it off, it might rip the paper. So I take my time at this part. I like to get it in one go. So take your time lining it up. And I just lined all the corners up together. And then you should be looking like this. Cute. And what I like to do is press down and make sure that it is on there. And then if you need to use your paperweight, you can use it. So what I like to do typically, because the next part will be doing the letters. So while I'm preparing my letters and using my ABC punch, don't forget to refer to my last video. Um, I would like to put a paperweight on top. And this is what I use as my paperweight. At one point, I was a claim suggester. So they gave me these books. And honestly, I keep them for paperweights. <laughs> so I just like to press it a little bit just to make sure it's on there. And then while that's, you know, marinating, <laughs> the glue trying to adhere to the paper, I like to go ahead and work on my letters. So I've already used the ABC punch and I've already laminated them. I just need to cut them out now. Just so you know, the laminator that I use is by Scotch. And I don't know, is I think I got it at Staples. I forgot the brand, but I just want to show it to you. So if you find it, this is the kind of use. And it's very lightweight. You can carry it around small. It only takes three and five um milliliter paper pouches i typically get the five i think the three is a little too thin for me um i do want to get a different machine that can do higher you know like seven and ten mil but for now i'm okay with the three and five so this is what i use when i do the laminator and then it comes out like this so i'm gonna go ahead and cut these and like I said, just make sure if you need help using the frame punch as well as the alphabet punch, my last two videos are those tutorials and it shows how to make the frame page of this shaker and to make these letters. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this out and then I will come back and we'll finish up. So I cut my letters already. This is how they look. I don't really like to cut out the middle part because honestly, it's hard to do. And the last time I did it, it came out so ugly and I had to start over. I was so mad. So I only cut around the outside and the edges. I don't really cut out the middle part. You barely notice it anyway because the lamination is so clear. So. Just so you know, don't go through the hassle of trying to cut out this middle part unless you got the means to do so. <laughs> so now we're on step seven. So we're almost done. We just need to add the letters on. And I will be putting the letters on with the foam mounting tape that I got from Dollar Tree. And what I like about this tape is that they're all individually cut already. I really like that. It makes it so much easier than instead of having to use scissors and cut it. Then you might risk making a crooked cut. So these are already nicely cut for you. And due to the sizing, I thought they were perfect for putting letters on, making pop-up cards. It's just perfect. It does its job. $1.25, no tax. It does its job. <laughs> so I want to figure out how I want to put the letters on. Oh, by the way, checkpoint. Do y'all look like this? Is this how we're looking so far? 
And due to the foam tape being as thick as it is, that's how the glitter is able to move around. So I like it. The only thing I hate about the Recollections glitter at times, like these little um, hexagonal pieces, uh, they kind of like stick. It's annoying, but it's still cute. I'm thinking of going for kind of like a diagonal kind of thing. Also, also make sure you play around first before you put it down. Because once you put it down, this does leave some kind of residue. It is definitely permanent and it sticks on. So figure out how you want to do your letters first, then add it on. I don't care if the letters stick out personally, just as long as it's not in the way of the rings. So I think something like this would be cute. Once I figure out what I want to do, I just go ahead and put it on there. Hold on, now I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to see, do I want to do just like I did for August and do the same format? Or do I want to do this way? Oh, that's a tough one. Okay, this way, this way, final answer. <laughs> and typically when I'm doing this with the letters, I only add one on there. I don't really do like two, three, four. Like you don't have to adhere all the ends, edges, if you don't want to, because I do want to give it the illusion of like it's popping out. So I don't want to adhere all the edges. And like I said, I don't mind if it's sticking out. I don't mind at all. I kind of like when it sticks out. The only thing I hate about the Dollar Tree one, if you... When you pull the back off to make the other side stick, sometimes the sticky part wants to go with it. It's annoying. So you gotta be careful if you're using the cheaper brands, just be careful. Now something like O, I'll probably put it on two sides. So for O, we'll do two sides, but you don't have to. And if you have issues sticking things on, cause I know a lot of us have nails, you can always use some tweezers too, to put it on there. And like I said, if the phone tape sticks out some, you can always push it a little bit, but I'm okay if it sticks out, like it's a craft, like what do we expect? <laughs> So now my letters are attached. If you need to use your paperweight, use your paperweight. But usually at the end, I put it in my planner and I let my planner be the weight. So this is it. And it came out so good. It looks amazing. Now the final thing, this is also optional, but I realized having a ring planner that I have the opportunity to add eyelets, which is so cute. These are examples that I've already started doing. I like adding the eyelets there because number one, it makes it durable. So it's not gonna rip out of your planner when you turn the page. And then number two, it just looks so good. And the fact that I have matching colors make it so much better. Like for this one, I thought about adding eyelets to it because I have the matching colors. And then the same for this one. So I don't know yet, should I add the eyelets to it? And by the way, these are both from We Are Memory Keepers. And if you do use this contraption to add the eyelets to your personal ring planner, make sure you use the three and 16th side, just so you know. But yeah, I have orange here. So I thought about adding it. Doesn't that look so good? It really brings it out. It looks so nice. So I'm trying to see, should I go ahead and add eyelets to it? I don't have purple, unfortunately, but I'm okay using all orange. 
Anyways, I'm still debating if I want to add them or not because I'm trying to save my eyelids. Apparently, these are kind of rare to get. Like, I really had trouble getting these. This is pretty much the tutorial. So, with that being said, let's see how it looks in the planner. Oh, it looks great. Yeah. And then when you close the planner, the tea sticks out a little bit, but like I said, I don't mind it sticking out, but that came out so good. If you don't want it to stick out, you can obviously scoot it in even more, but the O also stick out, so it goes together. That's pretty much the tutorial. I hope this tutorial was clear. I hope it was understandable. If you have any questions, let me know. And down below in the description box, I will put more materials that I've used. Stay tuned for my next tutorials, because I am on a tutorial kind of thing here. Like, I don't know. I just feel like posting a lot of tutorials and showing all the stuff that I've learned so far in my craft journey. So I'm just excited. Like two years ago, I would have never thought I would do this ever. I would have never thought that. I was okay just putting stickers in a planner because that is therapeutic. But now that I'm learning all these new things, thanks to having a business, it's forced me to learn so many new things. It's amazing. So make sure you also check out my Etsy shop. And should I add these in a shop? Are you guys interested in having these? I can do different sizes. I'm actually experimenting with trying to do a micro size. So that video will be coming out soon too. It's the same steps, but it's just a different size. So I'll be preparing for that. You guys have a good day. And let me know how your shaker turns out. Bye guys.